Well, Gibraltar catches its breath after that astonishing opening match of the evening session. The first quarter final going the way of Peter Wright, the number one seed, but only just. He was given an almighty workout by Darren Johnson Wright, though, coming through 6 5. Johnson going home despite registering an average of 99.33. And you have to say, Johnson played really well. A 1 4 4 checkout, one of three ton plus checkouts for him as well. But. It's Peter Wright who goes through to face the winner of this one. Rob Cross has already seen off one man from St Helens today in the shape of Dave Chisnell. Question is now, Chris Murphy, can he see off another in the shape of the number 12 seed, Michael Smith? Well, he saw him off the last time they met, the only time they met before. That was at the German Darts Open. And Rob Cross, who is now playing in his third European Tour quarter-final in as many attempts, has a real chance to progress even further. This match could be a story of 180s because this pair have fired in 22 maximums between them in this tournament. Rob Cross leading the 180 table with 12. And up to throw first. Game on. And Bully Boy, of course, has 10. Yeah, six of those came against Christian Kist in his second round win yesterday when Smith averaged almost 100 again and uh, four of them coming in that 6-5 win over Vandenberg. So two matches for Michael Smith going the distance, and there's every sign here it could happen again for him too, because Rob Cross, well, he's almost like an established oh, figure on the European oh, Tour, and bang on cue, oh, Michael yeah. Smith's first visit brings up the first 180 of the match. Yeah, and he's only one behind Rob Cross now in those uh, oh, 180 oh, tables, but all they care about is getting his first win. It's a bit unfair to point out that it would be his first win against Cross. They've only met once before, but Rob Cross is new to professional darts, isn't he? Well, he certainly is, but you wouldn't know it's on uh, the evidence of what he has done so far this year. Back-to-back -back European Tour quarter-finals, make that three European quarter-finals in succession now. He's made the last eight here. Easy one. Uh, very capable of doing more. Players' championship success as well earlier this year in Barnsley against Mervyn King in the final of that one. And it's just been a seamless transition, hasn't it, for him from the Challenge Tour Here's last year, came top of that. But he's acclimatised so well. Certainly has, and he's in poor position in this first leg, but Michael Smith does have a chance to break with a huge out shot for starters. Kicked off with a 180, will not be finishing the leg with a 167. 97. Leaves we'll himself pretty 86. handy, though. Yeah, handy just in case Rob Cross does not make it here, but he's found a treble 18 for double 16. He showed the first leg. 86 Rob check out it is. It's uh, 14 darts. Hold a throw for Rob Cross. 96. Rob Cross has also already seen off a former World Youth Champion in the shape of Keegan Brown in the qualifiers. 95. Michael Smith, as we heard in the uh, intro, is uh, another former World Youth Champion as well. Yeah, perhaps the one of all the former World Youth Champions has gone on to better fulfil his potential. Mm. Plenty haven't. Plenty that may yet do. Oh, Michael uh, Van Gogh lost in two finals. Aaron Monk and James Hubbard. Yes, I uh, do remember asking Michael about that, uh, whether it was something that sort of bothered him, um, because it was the 46. weekend that Keegan Brown was passing on the mantle to uh, Max Hopp a couple of years ago at the Players' Championship Finals in Minehead. Max Hopp played Nathan Aspinall in the final. Keegan Brown was there playing Van Gerwen. No, I and uh, it just came up in the interview afterwards, and it, yeah, I got the impression that it was the one thing that Van Gerwen perhaps wishes he had won. Well, I think... 59. He won't lose much sleep over it these days. No, it's, it's, it's happened elsewhere in other sports. Ayrton Senna was never World Youth Kart Champion. That was the one thing that really bugged him more than anything else, despite winning you know, the world title numerous Born occasions. Well, Rob Cross is Michael bugging Michael Smith there. a little here. 180, very timely indeed, because he's placed himself in the perfect position to break and double his lead immediately. And he's looking at double 16 once again here, found it in the first leg. Doesn't find it in the second, but double eight will do. And he's a long way off on both attempts there. Michael, you require... So a bit of a less off here for Bully Boy. 
well, good marker, but a, maybe a bit too close to comfort, but he finds double top anyway. Yeah, kind of set the post and then knock the third one in between. One hundred. Yeah, Peter Wright given an almighty scare, wasn't he, by Mexborough's Darren Johnson. Ninety-six. The bridge too far in the end for DJ. The win right. Sorry, the winner of this will take on Snake Bite Peter Wright. You just wonder if that was the chance to eliminate him from the tournament. I think so. Um, and when One you look hundred. at the three of the legs that Wright won, you know. Johnson had real genuine claims on, didn't he, as well? So, yeah, I think Johnson will, as he flies home back to the UK, will reflect on those opportunities and uh, reflect on the near misses. And as I said, if Peter Wright does go on to win the title, he'll look on back on that match as a very, very significant stepping stone. But you often get that one, you know, player wins a tournament. There is often one match where you think, well, that's where I won it, really. You know, the, the key moment in the tournament, the big scare that I survived. That's often the case. Yeah, and it'd be interesting to see what mentality, the, especially the four qualifiers that have reached a quarter-final, mm. how they will assess their weekend, because it's a fantastic weekend, isn't it? Darren Johnson, despite not taking that chance. Rob Cross might feel he's ready to move on from this position. And Magnus Carris in a first quarter-final for over two years. 100, Robbie, we've got 90. And of course, James Wilson and Daryl Gurney have been in this position before, so everyone having kind of different approaches, I guess and different expectations of themselves. Uh, Rob Cross expecting to land the ball, and that's what he does for a 90 checkout. 86 in leg one, 19 leg three, sharp shooting. Yeah, and the thing about Darren Johnson is he was on £3,000 on the order of merits, the European order of merits, and he's picked up another 4000 here as well, so it's done that particular tally the world of good in the standings for the European Tour Order of Merit and crucially it counts of course on the 100. Pro Tour Order of Merit as well and he's a player who's looking to keep himself in the top 64 in the world just to ensure he doesn't have to go through the agony of going back to Q school which he's had to do numerous times before. The second time Michael Smith has landed a 180 at the start of a leg but Rob Cross has also fired in his second doesn't give you much breathing space, does he, Rob Cross? 140! And he's going to be there or thereabouts again on the Michael Smith throw. 139! Michael Lucroy, 88. Well, this might have to go. And, and it does. Sublime. Sublime, Smith. absolutely. Double 18, double 16 to finish things off. That's. We talk about Michael Smith and his versatility sometimes, and that was perfectly illustrated there. Yeah, it's a, a risk, a big risk, because if he lands that first dart outside the double, he doesn't get a dart, where just going for single would leave him a shot, of course, at the bullseye. But it all went well that time, and it's all going well again. Three times he's kicked off with a 180, and I said we might get a lot. We've had five already. <laughs> and this is only the start of the fifth leg as well. 85. Yeah, if you're uh, involved in that particular betting market, then you might be uh, already on your way to the payout counter. 70. We talk about Smith's versatility, but that's the other side to his game as well. It's the inconsistency that can creep in now and then, as it, indeed it can with every player in the world. But 140. Yeah, but some are more consistently inconsistent, mm. aren't they? Michael Smith finding some form that went missing for the best part of a couple of years. He's been hit and miss this year, but last year he was kind of just missed. Yeah, I mentioned it earlier, just one quarter final on the Players' Championship circuit. He's by far and away bettered that already. Double 16. Three shots the fifth leg, Michael Smith. And it's a uh, break of throw for Michael Smith. Six leg, Michael to throw first. Yeah, wonderful on. darts, the 111 checkout. Crucial break as well. Holy boy, he's had, as you said at the beginning of this match, 57. two 11 leg encounters. But this time he's got a break and he can open up some daylight if he can hold. 
in this leg. His average is well above Only 100, two. as is Rob Crosses actually, although the last couple of minutes might have just made that go down slightly. Well, it was a 12 dart break of throw, as you can see there, and not really a great deal Rob Cross could have done about that in that particular situation. Michael Smith finishing very, very nicely indeed, and he just looks to have found himself in a bit of a groove here. 97. There we see the stats, 105 playing 104. High quality. It is indeed. It's been oh, a terrific, oh. terrific evening so far, and it's not even 45 minutes old. It's been a high quality evening session. Yeah. First quarter oh, final oh, and a half. Still plenty more along the way. Mensor Sulevich against Magnus Taris, James Wilson against Daryl Gurney. Then the two semis and the final. Or the Gibraltar Darts Trophy, and there will be a new name on that trophy tonight. And maybe we could have a first time European Sword Champion as well. Could be Rob Cross, but he has got work to do here. Michael Smith on 144. That's a lovely first dart. Double 12. 132. Oh, it felt like it was going to go. It's just, just looked to have that fluidity about yeah, it, didn't it? The floor. Crosser wants treble 20 for the bullseye for a massive 164 checkout after his opponents just missed 144. 439. Oh. Michael, you require 12. A shot at the flag, Michael Smith. Seven flag roll, well, two, three, I think Michael reverse. Smith will be relieved to an extent there. A missed bull for a 164 checkout to break back by Rob Cross. And as it is, Michael Smith comes through unscathed what? once again. Three legs on the spin for Bully Boy. Trail 2-1, leads 4-2. Two legs away from a place in the semi-finals here in Gibraltar. 96. Yeah, good finishing, good scoring. All going well for Bully Boy Michael Smith, the 26-year-old. Hasn't made the semi-finals of a European Tour event for some time. It was 100. the Austrian Darts Open last year when he reached the final, lost to Phil Taylor. That weekend in the final itself hasn't made the semi final of a European Tour event A since then. Five. Just that, uh, well, just two quarter final appearances, one last year, one this year. We have been keeping you up to date over the course of this weekend with the developments at the Challenge Tour, and another Easy. Smith is through to his first final, Andy the Pie Man Smith. E. Well, Michael Smith will be uh, grateful, I suppose, for the chance to put some pounds on the board as far as the European Tour order of merit is concerned. Three second round defeats this year, feeling the pinch as far as the new regs are concerned. I can't believe you followed a pie man reference by talking about putting on some pounds, Rob. <laughs> I certainly did it during the interval. It's a trouble with Gibraltar. There's too many nice places to go and dine in the two hours between 62. the afternoon and the evening. Well, there's not a place anyone would rather be than here tonight. A feast of entertaining arrows. 57. And Rob Cross needs 22 to pull yeah. it back to one leg. And he needs this as well. That's awkward. So he split that. And now he's looking at double four. Again, we see the shrug of the shoulders, the look of bemusement, but double four is found. And he was under a fair degree of pressure there. Certainly was. Smith again looking to kick off in maximum style, look at that. On a pinhead. Sixty. Michael Smith, of course, winner of half a dozen PDC titles, oh, including a couple on the European Tour, but the last one was back in 2015. Just illustrates that sort of lull that he's suffered for the last couple of years. Talks about the inconsistency, didn't we? 180, 
a 57 and a 140 oh, for uh, Michael Smith, but he is in good shape anyway, I down to a finisher of 124 on his throw. He's closing in, treble 18 would leave the ball, but he stayed where he was anyway. 60. Yeah, Smith won the European Darts Trophy in 2014 and 15, and the International Darts Open that year as well, the latter year. Now Cross applying the pressure, and this time it's Smith who needs to take out Michael the finish. 64. Terrific approach by, by Rob Cross, he's uh, on the green, but uh, Michael Smith will look to he's just dispel any Michael fears Smith. that may be existing. Michael it's another Rob very neat and tidy right check out on Game double on. 16 once again. That's come to his rescue three times today, really. And, uh, well, Rob Cross has it all to do now, needs to win three on the bounce. Michael Smith closing in on a place in the last four. The real Michael Smith is standing up. This is a very impressive display. Looks assured, looks confident and comfortable, despite the fact that Rob Cross is chucking everything at him, averaging around 102 himself. Oh, is that touching? 25. It wasn't. George Noble had a real good look at it. Would have been nice for Bully Boy if it had just dangled on the ball, wouldn't it? Thought we were going to have to go to the third 92. umpire then for a moment. Video referral system. The referee's word is final. And I believe it 100%. Now, Rob Cross, will he be pinning the balls at the end of this visit? Well, it would be a big, big shot in the arm if he did. Not to be, but well, he went for it. He didn't have to, but it's a very good miss. Ninety-six. Yeah, because it's left tops. I think Michael Smith may have given up the ghost on this one, but he'll just look to. Uh, well, more in hope than expectation that he will return. But Rob Cross, three darts at tops here, but there is pressure on Cross here. And that's a long way inside. Game shot, the knife leg, Rob Cross. Tim Blake Michael to throw fast. Game on. Well, this is the one, Michael. You don't really want another 11 leg encounter. You've had two of those already this weekend. You'll want to get the job done here and now. Yeah, they've been very pleased to see two big trebles go in, especially after the first start failed to find one. Certainly has this match in the palm of his hands right now, Michael Smith. 100. 6 1 8 is so far in this match. Maybe time for a couple more. 57. And again, 57 is the second visit as it was in the last one. Yeah, they both have 14 180 each now in the tournament. 100. Time for one more. Maybe even more than one. Let's see. Michael Smith might. Just underneath the second dart. But managed to fling the third over that. Great dart to leave 170. Superb. Now, Michael Smith's approach to that 170 will pretty much depend on what Rob Cross oh, can do here. He's got to go for it. And he has to go for it now because Cross is on a big finish of his own. Wrong bed, Michael. 83. Rob, you're going well, Michael Smith will just turn away here and just hope and pray that this does not go. And it won't. Didn't get the chance, having missed the bullseye for the 170 in the previous leg. Didn't give himself 64. the opportunity to take him Michael at the middle of the board in this one. And now Michael Smith closing in on the semi-finals. He wants 87 to do that. Might be the bull. It is the bull. And the chance has presented itself for Rob Cross. Chance has presented itself for Rob Cross to steal this leg and perhaps with it the match. He certainly has. Trouble 19 would have left tops. He's having a good long think about this. Double 19, I think, for double top. That's the route he opted for. Didn't work Michael out. Lewis so Smith didn't work Michael out. Lewis so Smith, an act of tidying up to book his place in the semis. Well, Rob Cross reflects on that decision-making process, but he may well get away with it anyway. Yeah, I'm not sure how 
well he threw the last darts. It landed in a single one. So he's only going to get one dart at double. Oof. Smith squandered a string of chances to seal the job here. And he Rob Cross has stolen the leg and forced a decider in which he has the throw. Well, Michael Smith has been detained once again here. And for the third time this weekend, Michael Smith is playing the 11th leg of a match. And Rob Cross, it is he who now has the momentum behind him. And that momentum has carried on into this 11th leg as well. Yeah, he didn't look as comfortable that visit, Michael Smith, as he has for the duration of this match. Because he just sensed it slipping away. Feels he should now be preparing for a semi final showdown with Snake by Peter Wright. Still has a chance. One big visit. One 180. One 180 will put him in charge. 140 gets him in front. Well, I was about to say advantage Rob Cross, but scrap that now. Well, there's one way to stop Michael Smith, and one way only, perhaps, and it's not going to happen. So Smith should get more match darts. He should indeed. Well, 265 wins already this weekend. Is it about to be a third? He's looking at double 12. He wants double six instead. And Michael Smith once again comes through with the slenderest of advantages to book his place in the semi finals of a European Tour event for the first time since June of last year. That time he went all the way to the final. This time he's got Peter Wright standing in his way. That should be an epic, epic battle in the last four later on tonight. But Michael Smith. It's through to the semi-finals here in Gibraltar. Rob Cross, another very eye-catching performance this weekend as well. Three successive quarter-finals on the European Tour for him. I'm sure we'll see a lot more of him this year as well for the rest of 2017. But for now, Michael Smith is breathing a big, big sigh of relief. Uh, just a quick reminder, on the way, we've got the next quarter-final for you. Mensur Sulevic, the number two seed, up against another surprise package this weekend, Magnus Karis. Michael, you now have the most coverage on TV of any player. 33 legs played so far. Are you going to continue this? It's good practice, isn't it? If I keep going five all, I keep getting more time on TV. People get to see the new shirts. I have fun learning. Or I could have got the job done quicker. Rob let me in a few times. I'll let him in. But if I'm 6 0 or 6 5, as long as I walk off and I'm still in the tournament, that's all that matters. I'm going to say the big difference is that now the last, this tournament at least, you're winning them 6-5 again because the last leg is just every time it's a really, really good leg. Yeah, I think the last, well, every game I've been 6-5, it's been a 13-40 and then a 12 now to win. I'm confident going into it was six months away, eight months ago, I think, just my luck. And he went off 1-3-4 and I'd give in straight away thinking, how's your luck? I, he doesn't deserve to be, but yeah, he's hitting big scores, and it was just, just to keep with him, do what I do best at the big scores, at the big 180s, and hopefully at the doubles at the end. Well, that means now you're in the semi-final. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. The bully boy, Michael Smith. <laughs> 